can always tell that someone is toxic by the ingredients that they put in their apologies. <laughs> and I, I use the word ingredients to imply that their apologies are, hmm, their apologies are sort of like a cake. You know, they add some of this, a little bit of that, a splash of that, bake it, slap it on a plate, and now you're expected to eat it. It is a toxic mix of empty, sugary BS and fluffy platitudes with a hint of salty malintent while mixed in very nicely. So everything rises nice and high and you never know what's in it until it goes down. Healthy people with genuine regret for their words or actions don't have to concoct an apology. They merely speak from the heart and change their behavior subsequently. On the other hand, toxic people like narcissists and borderlines and psychopaths and other toxic people have a polluted heart uh, and it's full of their unfulfilled needs and false self. Thus, they're, they're forced to dig deep in their arsenal of observed functional behavior, which basically means all the things that they've seen you do that have been successful and that look relatively normal. And they sort of use that to manufacture their own genuineness and their own sort of fake and fake regret or repentance. So here are what I would say are the five basic ingredients to a, a toxic apology. Starting with flattery. We all know narcissists are really good at filling our heads with sweet nothings, mainly so that we have something to buffer us when, um, when the apology is over and when we can resume taking the blame and the responsibility for all their sick behavior. But flattery during an apology is basically the short and intensified version of the love bombing phase you had at the beginning of the relationship when you were unsuspecting and unassuming. I mean, you remember how they stared into your eyes and they told you wonderful things about yourself and, oh, they told you, you know, you're, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me and, you know, I want to be with you forever and I would, I would never hurt you ever. And, and then during this time, they basically say the same thing during the time when you're in an argument and they just want to basically get you to shut up, they will in enforce this flattery onto you you know like i would i would never hurt you on purpose you mean everything to me no one compares to you i'm willing to give up everything to get right with you again my heart is yours and no one else is worthy blah 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 you can fill in the blank with all the bs your former toxic partner ever said to you and basically that's that's how you know that they're toxic because they feel the need to have to buffer you to flatter you so that you would believe whatever they want to say next. None of it is real. They think they mean it genuinely in the moment because of the intense feelings they have at the idea of you leaving them for good. But because they don't have the proper faculties to generate things like empathy and genuine love, their words are empty and thus meaningless. So when their flattery doesn't melt your walls like they would like them to, and you start arguing with them, you know, like a normal person, because what you're saying and what they're saying, they're not, they're not hearing you. They're not agreeing with you. They don't see your point of view because they really don't want to, and they have no intention of changing. Then starts the projection of their own feelings of shame onto you. They say things like, why do you hate me so much? Why do you always focus on the past? You always think everything is my fault. You never trusted me. You always accuse me of cheating or whatever other bad behavior that they do without any evidence. Why are you so suspicious of me? They never actually take responsibility. So in their apology, it quickly turns sour. After all the flattery, there's this quick shift where once that tactic doesn't work, then starts the projection. And then sometimes they skip the flattery and the projection altogether and go straight to denial. Well, no matter how obvious the facts are, they refuse to admit wrongdoing. I never said that. You just made that up. You didn't see anything. You're, you're lying. How do you know I wasn't telling the truth? 
even lying about their regular day-to-day behavior, activities. They really do want you to believe the BS that they're telling you, which then bleeds into blame, where they somehow make your reaction to their bad behavior more criminal than their actual behavior. If you can believe it, this is this probably takes the cake because it's sort of like, I don't know if you've ever experienced this while you were in grade school, but say, you know, someone, you say you're in class and someone behind you takes your pencil, they snatch your pencil and they steal it because they really wanted to look at it and they really like it. So they take it and you say, oh, this is so cool. And then you say, okay, that's great. Okay, now give it back. And then they refuse to give it back. They're like, no, I'm still looking at it. And you're like, give me my pencil back. And they refuse. And then when you get upset, they laugh at you. They're mad at you for your reaction to their bad behavior. It's the same thing. It's just as immature, just as childish, because we all know narcissists on the inside are deeply childish. They have not recovered from their own childhood trauma. So they blame you and they make your response to their behavior more criminal than their actual behavior. And then lastly, of course, all of this, all of this contributes to their gaslighting, whether it be lying about what they've been doing, whether it be telling you that you feel something that you don't actually, accusing you of never trusting them, of never loving them, that's gaslighting. Gaslighting, in a sense, is changing the way that you see reality, forcing you to believe into something that is not true. Painting a world in a way and forcing you to believe into it fully. All of this is gaslighting. All of this is their way to control you. And after an argument, what happens? Nothing changes. They don't become a better person. They don't suddenly become wise and say, I'm sorry, you know, I, I, I shouldn't be doing this. I, I know I'm wrong. I just, I just can't help it. No, none of that changes. They do the same thing. They don't change. They don't grow. They don't mature. They don't get wiser. Their apology means nothing. That's why it's so empty. And you realize, wow. So that's what a toxic apology sounds like. Let me know your experience down in the comments of any sort of argument or apology that you've received from a narcissist of just basically how ridiculous they see the world and how they force you to see the world in the same way they do. Basically where they never have to take any responsibility, take any fault, admit any wrongdoing whatsoever. And then you take the blame for everything. If you like this this content, like the video, of course, and subscribe to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you don't miss another video that I post every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And once again, leave a comment down below and I'll see you on the next one.